to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. He's back, baby. Had no idea if I would be. There are no dry runs over here. He we just figure wins. it out. We figure it out live. We're doing it live. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Back with you Friday, September 27th. And uh, Deucer's Alley, one Deucer short. Oh. oh he's I out. see Owl. Yeah. I see Papa Josh. You can always see him from the glisten. I of course. A, I see a falcon dump. <laughs> the falcon is not Where here Where could he possibly be? But we did a good job of representing him. We on. all know he's in a bathroom somewhere. Okay. All right. You know, we really got to find a, a more <laughs> concise it's flushing just, sound that doesn't go forever. It's Can just, we fade the flush? Fade it. Just let it, fade let, the it, flush. Let, it, let, it let it do its work. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, another great intro to the show. I, that, that flush could have represented what I had to do with um, bleach in my eyeballs last night. I mean, that was what in the world was Thursday that? night fartball. I that was oh the, nice. It was the worst. I I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I enjoyed none of that. I I actually am thankful for a good night's rest. Um, very sleepy after watching that game. So oh, right, boor- right out. So boring. Oh, like a melatonin. Dose? It was. It was, I was pure melatonin in the eyeballs. That was. It wasn't even because I've seen. I, I I tweeted this. I've seen worse football. There right. was some good football being played, but somehow the most boring, worthless, awful, just trudge fest. Um, I was on a radio show this morning, uh, and and Jody was saying it was like Groundhog Day. Every single yeah. every single drive was the same. You knew what was going to happen. It just kept over and over and over. The Giants get the ball, and they go very slowly, very very slowly. They can't be stopped until they're down on the other end of the field, and then they're going to kick a f- just kill me. <laughs> it was it was like I've never been. Less happy with I, I've been saying this all morning. I have CD Lamb. He was he had twenty two fantasy points in our league. That's great. He had twenty fantasy points with eleven minutes left in the second quarter, <laughs> which meant I watched the rest of the game and those plotting stupid drives. And by the way, those drives included no value for Devin Singletary if you played him. Dude, this they, the, the the other weird part of the game is because I agree, I hated so much of the game. But maybe part of that is because the game started with such excitement. Of, look, we had the Rico Dowdle touchdown, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Mike. This is a big moment in, for you. In the but here's the problem. It's just like Ceedee Lamb. Rico in the first quarter had t- like almost ten fantasy points, and then they never saw the ball. And Ceedee Lamb has this huge touchdown. The Cowboys don't do anything. The East and, Coast dads missed nothing if they went to bed at halftime. And I'm saying what's so wild is. Like Dak, Dak had a very serviceable game. It it was what sucks is it was on the way to an elite game, but it was just it was okay. Two hundred twenty and two. Rico Dowdle eleven for forty six on the ground, one for fifteen with a score through the air. Good game. Ceedee Lamb. Good game. Jake Ferguson caught all seven of his passes. You said neighbors. It, Malik neighbors. Awesome a, game. The only guy who didn't have a good game. Is the guy that should have easily had the, had the easiest path to have a good game. 14 for 24 on the ground for Devin Singletary. He was uh, atrocious. And uh, the, the ah! you know Daniel Jones completed a ton of short passes to Wandale Robinson, who Jason described as the worst. Yeah, because I like to think of him as the DeAndre Swift of the wide receiver position. Um, he does. He is actually really talented yes, at getting a, open. He's a good player near the line of scrimmage. Like that is, I mean, he can he can separate behind the line of scrimmage, <laughs> amazingly. I have never seen someone do less with more opportunity than him. It was, and he had that's fair. He had a lot of important plays. Like oh, he he could have picked up this fourth down. He could have scored. Third down. He breaks one tackle on the third and goal where they set the play up by you know neighbors ran the defense off. 
They swing it to Wandale. If he breaks one tackle, he scores, and maybe, maybe somebody wakes up to watch the rest of the football I, game. I feel like I've never in my life seen someone get 11 receptions, and they're almost all screens and not break a tackle. I don't know if maybe in the in the you know PFF tracks, oh, he had one broken tackle or whatever, but he didn't. He didn't get any yards from the, it. It was the third lowest fantasy production on that many receptions in like 15 years. So he he basically like this was what Elijah Moore was doing in Cleveland last year. I mean, name a wide receiver well, that is the most mediocre, just a guy, veteran, uh, you know, third stringer who's just been around for six years from team to team. Name any any wide receiver. Can you think of? No, I don't know you where you're going. With no, this. no, no, no. Like Rondale Moore. Or? Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, uh, like. Uh, 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 Reynolds, uh, Josh Reynolds, or, sure. or any, any just okay. a guy that's out there. It's like you you break a couple tackles. If you get the ball eleven times, you you make one guy miss. Okay, but so I will. In the defense of Wandale Robinson, he's doing he's running the plays that he is being asked to run, and it's uh, Daniel Jones is the one who can't get the ball down the field. And so look. He yeah, had, playing he had the, opportunity after opportunity I know, but to here, break a tackle. But, but hold on, listen to this. He's the and first guy who a shoestring tackle actually meant a shoestring. Right. Playing playing the game of taking one play away from a player, it's a it's a dangerous thing. Malik Neighbors was awesome, right? Yep. You realize his longest catch of the night was that huge thirty nine reception or thirty nine yard reception. Wandale Robinson was eleven for seventy one. Malik was twelve for one fifteen. Without that forty yard catch. Malik is eleven for seventy six. No, I I get it, but there, but it was different in when, it's play when you calling. Were, yeah, I mean this is what they're doing. But when you were actually watching it, Wandale had like like M Malik was getting the ball, like getting tackled. Wandale was getting the ball in space, space evaporated, and and he got nowhere, no extra yards. Yeah. Anyways, it feels like we are focusing on the negative because we didn't enjoy the experience, and we're gonna say it, it was I so mean, weird. We're gonna say it. We wanted a better game than this. Nobody wanted to see fifty-seven field goals, and all the penalties. It oh was my sweet, God. fancy Moses. Just you know what? At some point, refs, you're, it's done. Let them hold. <laughs> at Dude, some, just at some point, you go. Well, we got to swallow these flags. We're done. We've we've thrown the maximum amount of flags right. we can there throw. There should be a max flag. There should be a. Uh, you, you've got like a, a utility ball. belt, and you have a limited amount. Yeah, yeah. You don't get those back. You don't pick them up. You no. leave if them you on the use field. Them, if you use them on trash calls, you lose them for the yeah, big ones. One hundred percent. I mean, it was. And then it, there's like a money a money flag, like the money ball. <laughs> Well, and the, that and one's the, worth double the penalty yards. And you don't know how much of this is. Th look, it's Thursday night, so they have less time to prepare. Maybe the teams are tired. Maybe there's you know there's oh, more holding. Oh, and there were and injuries. That. Well, yeah. the Malik neighbors injury. I don't, I don't know if you and guys. Micah Parsons and, yeah. and Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, like this was a Thursday night. This is not the one they show when they pitch the, you know, the players union on Thursday night football. They don't show them this game. Right. Yeah. No. It was, it was a pretty brutal slugfest for injuries. But man, I just Malik neighbors took so many yes, monstrous tackles in that did. game, and I was really surprised earlier in the game when he was like bent over his neck and he hit his head and he was kind of slow to get up. That no one checked him on that. He did a good job of faking that thing out. Yeah, I mean, maybe he did he a did. good he job of have. popping up. But real uh, quick. at the end of the game, important to note if you aren't aware or didn't see it, he did leave, was ruled out at the end of the game with a concussion. So he his status, I mean, at least he's got 10 he's days. Got he has the extra, extra time. time. But, yeah. uh, you know, most people miss the, the next week. But guess what? That was Thursday. This is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Oh, every Friday we give away a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com and a fantasy footballers t shirt to somebody that supports the show over at jointhefoot.com. And today's winner, Tristan Simmons. Tristan Simmons, congratulations. You have won $100 to fantasychamps.com. Congratulations. What a way to start your Friday. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. You guys ready for the rundown? Give it to us. All right. Jordan Love limited on Thursday. He's, as of right now, they're calling him a game time decision. Very annoying. Um, <laughs> it, but it's like, okay, so just if Jordan Love plays, is he into? Is he a top ten play? Is he top twelve guy this week against Minnesota? If, no, no, that's not it's at a all. Very okay. difficult matchup, but it does change 
the wide receiver options. I mean, I'm probably playing Reed either way, but I'm more excited about Reed if Love is is there. Gotcha. I was going to say it, it doesn't change my start sits at wide receiver either against I, Minnesota. I I'm playing Reed no matter what. It changes your upside, like you said, but. Yeah, I, I know you are very anti Christian Watson. Christian Watson to me goes from a flex option with Love to just not playable without him. Yeah, okay, I, I agree that with makes that. sense. Uh, Alvin Kamara returned to practice on Thursday. All right. Deontay Johnson uh, scared everybody. He was ah! he didn't play on Thursday with a groin injury, but the news came out later that he didn't practice due to field conditions. But isn't it his field? Like he, I mean, he it's not his. Field well, I'm game. just saying like it's this the is their field. Their their field, right? Aren't the 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 field conditions are so bad he's like not practicing. What about everyone else? Well, yeah, clearly he was dealing with something and they didn't want to risk it. He on had the, a on uh, the rainy, muddy field. I believe he was dealing with some type of groin injury back in August. Okay. So you guys aren't worried about this? I uh, no. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not I mean I you have to no. monitor it. Yeah. But, yeah. but I'm he's in all my lineups. Uh by the way, update on Bucky Irving who missed practice. He is testing himself today early in practice. He says he is going to play on Sunday. And so early on in practice, they say it's not limiting him yet. We need to monitor that as well. Roma Dunze added to the injury report with a hip injury. He was limited. You, you, like Deontay, I mean, Deontay is, is excusable, but you just don't like to see the people practicing on Wednesday and then not on Thursday, although it was limited. What if we just don't practice? A.J. Brown, Devontae <laughs> Smith. That's worse. Not practicing on Thursday, I think we're expecting them both to miss the game. Yeah, that's that's the current expectation. So fire up your John Dawson. <laughs> Couldn't even get it out. No. Dallas Goddard it is. Let's go, Goddard. All right, big names for the matchups coming up today that we need to talk about. We got news that Nico Collins was added to the injury report with a hamstring injury. Mike making the bitter beer face at the moment because he was not only – in line for a monster performance, but he was Mike's pick during our parte parlay. Yeah, so uh, uh, tread carefully, everybody. Uh, Justin Herbert remained limited with the high ankle sprain. Trey McBride already ruled out yep. with the concussion. Devontae Adams added to the injury report on Thursday with a hamstring. This is the uh, fourth or fifth hamstring of the week. Big hamstring is big hamstring. collecting checks right Sometimes now. Sometimes it's the groin. Yes. Sometimes it's the hamstring. And uh, I don't know if the weather conditions... You know, they tend to the hamstring. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you saw this a couple of weeks ago when, when in the middle of the week, AJ Brown was added to the, you know, Thursday injury report with a hamstring, and he's missed weeks. So, I, uh, wasn't he like immediately out though? Yeah, I mean, it, not it for is, the weekend, but he was. He it was is DNP. It is very nice to see that they are limited yeah. with that. David Njoku ruled out as well. We were talking about uh, Jake Ferguson's performance last oh, night. Oh, man. Seven catches on seven yeah. targets, 49 yards. Yeah, in this tight end economy, guys. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's the top five showing. That is a monster performance. <laughs> in this economy, I love that line, but no Njoku, no Trey McBride, because we certainly didn't need them this week. Nah. I uh, I know Al Borland and I are, are facing one another in the league of record, and, and he's got Trey McBride, but never fear. Zach Ertz is here. Yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> In this economy, <laughs> yes. Zach Ertz is a pretty good guy to pick up. <laughs> he had to get his mentor. You could do way worse uh, because, you know what, guess what? Evan Ingram, unlikely to play. Uh, next week looks promising. That yeah. is a quote. Yeah. Okay. George Kittle. Here we go. Here we go, baby. He expects to return in week four against the Patriots. Fantastic. I doubt. Debo makes it back. He there did, was some optimism this morning. He that returned. He is. Yeah, he returned to a limited practice um, yesterday. Uh, if, if I had to put my bet right now, um, I think George Kittle plays. Debo doesn't, well, but monitor it. Let's talk about the relevant thing that that pertains to. As a Juwan Jennings manager in many leagues, a return of Kittle and a return of Debo. What do you do with – If they're both there, I don't think you can start Juwan Jennings. I know he had the monster performance, but this is a matchup against New England that is not a great matchup, plus you are favored by a ton. So if they get out to that lead and Jordan Mason has a good game to to say, I'm going to take – what would Juwan Jennings be then? The the third, the fourth read in the offense? I mean, he – You're not playing him if Debo's active? If Debo and Kittle are active. Now, I'm, what I'm if not, Debo – I mean, I think – If it's just Kittle, I think he's a flex play. Okay, Debo is back at practice this morning. David Lombardi, 40 minutes ago, said he has a chance to re, uh, return a week earlier than expected, but a lot rides on how the practice goes today. So we'll find out, and we'll update you. Mike is there with you on Sunday morning, on Sunday live. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we'll we'll hopefully avoid any real surprises that morning to send Mike into a tornado of nah, of man, tilt. that's what it's all about. That's the good stuff. Any other updates? I'm sure there's a hamstring of coming up on Just us. Just wait. <laughs> yeah. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. All right. Uh, before we jump into the rest of the fantasy forecast, we also have the fantasy face-off on today's show. Uh, lots to talk about. Lots of start-sit decisions to help you with. I did want to invite everybody to head over to jointhefoot.com, become a member of our fantasy football community, gain access to the uh, every channel in the Discord server, a bonus episode of the podcast every week, a ton of in-season resources like the Stream Finder tool, the expanded start-sit tool. The strength of schedule. Yeah, strength, which is like on Monday we're going to talk a lot about the changes on the defensive side of the football, but the strength of schedule tool is starting to become very valuable. And then, of course, the brand-new Ultimate Dashboard, which gives you a customized waiver wire ranking, gives you spot starts based on your league, gives you a lineup optimizer, uh, all brand new for this year and for our supporters at jointhefoot.com. We'll take a break, and then we'll jump in. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, uh, the Fantasy Forecast, getting ready to go here. Yesterday we covered the Saints, Falcons, Rams, Bears, Vikings, Packers, Steelers, Colts, Broncos, Jets, Eagles, Bucks, and Bengals, Panthers games. And I can't hear forecasts without uh, wanting to pause for just a minute and throw the, uh, the best wishes and prayers out for everybody in the uh, Florida, south southern part of the country right yeah. now with the hurricane making landfall. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Uh, we're thinking of you. Jacksonville, they get to travel out of Florida. They're going to Houston. Jacksonville 0-3, Houston 2-1. and The game's in Houston in the DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Houston minus 6.5. Divisional game, the over-under is 45.5. Jason, you're shaking your head. What's your reaction to my, this matchup? My reaction to this matchup is I think you've got to ask the question, do the Jaguars figure it out? Because right now they, they look like they're – confused almost you know they're, they're they've got personnel for a pass rush they have no pass rush um, they have personnel for a great offense their offense has sputtered they seem like on both sides of the ball they've kind of been figured out and this dates back to the second half of last season now a divisional matchup these two teams know each other better and that means that the Jaguars know the Texans a little better they've faced Stroud a few times they might have something you know up their sleeves for them so you just have to ask yourself is this the week that the Jaguars figure it out I don't think so. Well, That's just it, me. I that you know, you got to ask yourself, do you think they do? I do not. Not in Houston. Last year the road team, however, won both of the matchups between the two. So it just goes to show that divisional matchups can be quite different. Jacksonville's up against it, you know, the way you describe their team personnel and problems. That's that screams coaching. That screams coaching and game plan to me. Uh problems at the quarterback from a confidence standpoint. But Mike, do you believe that Jacksonville has an opportunity in this game. Or are you trying to avoid Jacksonville players? I don't know that in the Houston matchup. They're they're tenth against the run. Houston so far this year, after being fifth against the run last year, that potentially caps Etienne's upside. But I know no one's benching him. Well, Etienne is a like it's just your volume and you're you're hoping for the touchdown. I, that's where I am with Travis Etienne right now because of how bad the offense has been. It is like. Brian Thomas, I'm I'm gonna play him. He had his uh I think career high in targets last week. Let me verify that. Brian Thomas, I mean week three, yeah, nine. Seven? Oh, nine. Nine targets. I mean That's it was nice. It was the uh, it was a throttling from the Buffalo Bills. But like Brian Thomas has been good enough through three weeks and he's a rookie. Should be improving. Christian Kirk is like, what is going on? I think <laughs> th this is an issue of the Jaguars of do you not know how do they forget? On a week to week basis of of who Christian Kirk is, what his abilities are, because week well, one, four targets, one catch. Week two, three targets, one catch for negative one yards. And then in the route from Buffalo, oh hey, ten targets, eight for seventy nine. It's it's so impossible to know what to do with Christian Kirk because 
historically for the for the Jags, since he's been there with the big contract that people thought he didn't deserve, he's been very good for them, and he's been very good for fantasy. But yeah, I think he, I, he, but he vanishes at the beginning. You, you have to take a you know a larger viewpoint. I mean, I I would expect still with no Evan Ingram that they are going to involve him more than three targets. Last week, though, you kind of have to crumple up because what happened was – That's know, where I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I think I think you're looking at a flex option here for um, for Christian Kirk. If I were to start – Mooney one, or Kirk? I would go Darnell Mooney there. He's leading the Falcons in receiving yards. I, I would also go Brian Thomas over both. Brian Thomas might not have had the targets that Christian Kirk had last week, but when you watch him well, play, I'm waiting fewer. for the breakout because he is – He's just really, really good. Right now he ranks third in yards per out run behind only neighbors and Bowers for the rookies. He's he's looked really good. So right now the situation, uh, ETN, like you said, you might be touchdown dependent. Kirk, you waver. Br Brian Thomas, you can you can flex. Um, would you play him or Pickens against Indianapolis? I'm assuming we'll oh, go pick Pickens. Pickens. Pickens for sure. Uh, on the other side of the football, and no one's starting Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I'm not I sure Jacksonville should, not should either. Stephon Diggs. <laughs> well, I, look, this is what we're going to talk about. Um, Nico Collins was limited. If he plays in this football game, which I think he will right now, that's where I'm I at. think so too. It should be incredible for him. Tank Dell is uh, did not practice and is not expected to play. Stephon Diggs is receiving lines at 60 yards. He's got 24 targets. Last week was a big week for him. He's had a disappearing week. He had the touchdown week. So through three weeks, what's your confidence level in Diggs in this game? It's it's very high based on Tank Dell. Right now, it, I'm, I'm expecting Tank Dell to not play. That was what they said even a couple days ago is that the expectation is he's probably going to miss this week with a painful rib injury primarily. Um, and so if he's out and there's two guys here in a game where I think it the, lines up perfect for C.J. Stroud. We talked about the Jacksonville Jaguars. They play a lot of man, and they don't have a pass rush. That is where C.J. Stroud can just sit back there and utilize great wide receivers to torch them. This would have been a great game for Tank Dell. It should be a great game for Nico Collins, who is awesome against man. And and I do think Stephon Diggs will, will eat in this as well if it's just the two primary targets. Cam Akers looks like he's going to get to start again, and I want to I want to go back to that question of of Cam oh, Akers because we have a slight update here. Okay, that's from, a, just a partial. Uh, well, James Palmer said Nico Collins. Uh, oh my was goodness! Limited yesterday, but he's at practice. Joe Mixon is also out here as well. Whoa! That's the first time Mixon has been seen since the ankle sprain. He was no one could find uh, him, <laughs> <laughs> like Waldo. A couple days ago, he was listed as week to week. I don't know that this, even if he gets a, you know, a limited here. A limited on Friday? It, that probably speaks to him sitting out at least one more week. Uh, but you know, so you got to have the conversation then of, I'm, I'll still expect Joe Mixon to be out. And then with uh, Damian Pierce not practicing as well, I think Cam Akers is he's a fine flex. Yeah, and, and Foot Clan members, we have the Injury Blitz podcast that comes out um, after we record this show. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, goes through all these big questions. So, um, you know, if, if you're part of Join the Foot, you, you know, you can take a look at that and uh, add that to your podcast uh, routine. Cam Akers, to me, if he's alone, is a must start. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, last week we, we talked about he was an okay-ish – flex option because they were playing against the hard Minnesota defense he got a touchdown um, this week against Jacksonville so far they're 29th on the season and fantasy points allowed to running backs averaging 25.6 points per game to opposing running backs so yeah Cam Akers is 100% in if uh, and what if Mixon they're like hey Mixon's gonna play but he's gonna be limited <sighs> the matchup is so good if Mixon's gonna play at all if he is active I will Probably play Mixon and not play Cam Akers. Okay. All right, the Washington Commanders at two and one travel to Arizona to take on the one and two Cardinals, and the DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Arizona minus three and a half. The over under is fifty. Fifty. I'm fifty. <laughs> Last time Arizona had a team implied point total this high in a fifty plus game was December. So this is like twenty seven points. Is um is their implied total? Washington at 23 Wait, and a half. Uh, December you of, said December. Yeah. Uh, of 2021. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a Sometimes I skip words. <laughs> but that, one's an, that one's an important one because that's the – That uh, wasn't a word. That was a number. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
yeah, it's been it's been a long time. But is the, a number a number is a word? It is, but when if it's written as a number, I wouldn't say it's a word. Oh, but, but yeah, I you would. Either, no, I wouldn't. If you write the number one or you write the you word say, one you, out, you I'm not. Only I'm not write saying words, speaking. right? No, you can write numbers. A number is not a word. Al, uh, Al, Al, not that I trust you, but what do you, what do you think? I think Jason said it well. If you if you write the number the numeral one, it is not a word. But if you write yep. O N E, that is a yeah. Word. I mean, what are the Roman numerals? Those aren't Roman words. They're numerals. Right, yeah, they're no, num- that's true. Yeah, and and which is crazy because they're letters, <laughs> which is like <laughs> a number is a word such as T W O N I N E. Yeah, yeah. Or a symbol such as one three forty seven. All right, so it's a symbol. A word is a symbol. No, no, no. The number is a symbol. Right. Number is a symbol. And that and that number specifically symbolizes that it's been a long time since the Cardinals have, yes. have been uh, projected for 50 for points, bring, bringing it back, it back around. Yeah. Um, so it's, here we are. Jaden Daniels last week, so impressive. Probably not as impressive as the stat sheet from a, as a passer. Uh, because a lot of their offense was like Daniel Jones at one point last night was 22 of 26 or 24 of 28. Did you think Daniel Jones was, you know, the best pass you've ever seen? Probably not. And, and last week there were two great downfield throws that Jay hey, Daniels completed. They were very good. I, I'm just saying like, I, yeah, yeah. just be careful with your expectations. Arizona's defense so far, um, you know, it's okay. This game is a great over under. There's a lot to look forward to. Kyler Murray and Jaden Daniels are both starts. Kyler's my start of the week. The passing line for Daniels is 212. And I I certainly wouldn't feel confident enough yeah. throwing the over up there. That, fe- that feels to me high. It does. I mean, he's been above that two of three weeks, but that does feel – I don't know. You get you got to get at least one of those huge downfield shots to connect. This is certainly a game where you, you hope it's not a trap game because this appears to be one where you want pieces on both sides of the ball. You want to put Brian Robinson in without Austin Eckler there. You want to play Daniels. You, you know, even Terry McLaurin, after the big matchup with a 50-point over-under, you're thinking this could be two bad defenses and two good offenses and a, and a real barn burner in a controlled environment in a dome. So – you know, I hopefully it's not a trap. I don't think it can be too big of a trap a with trap. Washington's defense. The Cardinals' defense has been um, much better than their talent in the sense that they, you know, they they're not a, a talented personnel group. But um, you know, their top uh, schedule adjusted right now. They're number four in fantasy points given up to running backs this season. Uh, they did, however, lose a defensive lineman, which sucks for the Cardinals and is good for fantasy. You got so, uh, Daniels or Joe Burrow this week? Daniels. I love Burrow's matchup. This I, week. Do I do, too. On, on the yeah. road against Carolina. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Joe Burrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the James Conner and Brian Robinson are locks. Yes. Marvin Harrison, he was dealing with a quad injury, limited in practice. We expect him out there in his receiving lines at uh, almost 70. So, you know, those are kind of the locks. Trey McBride's going to miss this game. Where do those targets go? Yeah, it, that's a tough one. I mean, I think you could take, like, DFS dart throws on Michael Wilson. That's where I would go. Uh, but Elijah Higgins is the bottom of the barrel backup tight end pass catcher. Yeah, so nasty. But Elijah Higgins did catch a touchdown in week one. He was the one that caught that ridiculous scrambling uh, <laughs> like, Kyler Murray. Like the one play where McBride was off the field, and it goes to the tight end. Hey, he caught the ball. Yeah, he was great. And no, no, I'm saying like I'm complaining. Yeah. What about uh, Terry McLaurin or the aforementioned um, Darnell Mooney? Oh, I'm gonna, my I'm gosh. gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go with Terry. Yeah, I lean that way too. Any other questions from this game you want to bring up before we move on? Nope. The Patriots are one and two. They take on the one and two San Francisco 49ers. Uh, but Patriots. The 49ers <laughs> at home. DK has it at. I mean, San Francisco, 10.5-point favorites Whew. with an over-under of just 40.5 points, which means New England, Whoa. New England, you've set a new record, 15, as your implied point total. Congratulations. So, you know, let's just start on the New England side. I have decisions in a league where it's like, I've got Ramondre. He was great for two weeks. He was an unmitigated disaster last week. This matchup is awful, and everything that they want to do to win a game, they're not going to be able to do in this one. 
I'm playing Chuba Hubbard over Ramondre this week as an example. Yeah, I, th I think Chuba is is a pretty good play, so I don't I don't blame you there. I don't view Ramondre as someone that you must bench. Um, last week was an albatross. They got destroyed by the Jets. Everything went wrong. The Jets' pass rush was in Jacoby. So far, are you, are you describing face. this game? Um, I I'm not describing this game. The the Niners also lost the defensive lineman for the season. Um, this last week, so we'll we'll see how that affects their pass rush and their defensive line. Um, I I, I I'm not saying Ramondre is a great play against the 49ers, but I I don't want people to overreact from last week. Probably smart. Uh, Pollard against Miami or Ramondre in this game. I would go Pollard there. Uh, Carson Steele. I would go Steele. Whew. Okay. Okay. How I, low do I have to get till you? Yeah. You you that are. That feels pretty, pretty bearish on Ramondre there. Yeah, I mean, I I I think I'm Carson not Carson Steele over Ramondre. Mike, are you in that camp? I. I don't know. It, the, Ramondre is so confusing to me. Of like week one, it it felt like a really big surprise, and then. We, as the season has gone along, the Cincinnati Bengals defense, you go, oh, yeah, that makes that makes sense why Ramondre looked so good. And the Seattle one is confusing because their defense has been okay. I mean, they're they're pretty padded right now because they uh, kicked the crap out of Miami with uh, Skylar Thompson. But he was, you know, 21 of carries, 81 yards, 3.9 a carry. That's, it's you okay. know how many fumbles he has? Ramondre? Yeah. Oh, I do not. No. One per game. Oh, oh no. Is, that's supposed to be his teammates thing. That's, he's lucky that Uncle Bill is out of town. That's Gibson. You might want to throw oh, Gibson man. on a bench. Uh, yeah. Because the punishment could be on the way. Ask me Ramondre or DeAndre Swift. <laughs> Ramondre or DeAndre Swift. We got Swift. there, yeah. baby. Yeah. Ramondre. All right. So we're 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 not starting any other any other Patriots, right? I I, I think so. It pay attention to Pop Douglas, Demario Douglas. They finally got him back involved after the weird two weeks. I'm not saying play no. him. I'm not saying play him. I won't watch. <laughs> Jay, you know people have to play more than 24 wide receivers. Yeah, yeah, I know, and he's not going to You can't crack just that. say only play the top 24 guys. No, I know. There's plenty of players below the top 24 that I'll start over Patriot wide receivers. Ray Ray McLeod or Demario Douglas? Um, That would be Pop Douglas if, if you're going that low. But if it was like Demarcus Robinson... I'd, I'd be playing Demarcus Robinson. You already heard us discuss the wide receiver situation on San Francisco earlier where, you know, Juwan Jennings, he's a flex. If it's just Kittle and no Debo, he's probably a high, he's a high risk player, but I don't think he's a full guaranteed bench. Like I'm playing Juwan Jennings over Demario Douglas, regardless yeah, of that. the amount of active 49er wideouts because Debo can leave early. Debo could be limited. Juwan Jennings had 175 yards and caught everything thrown his way last week, and and this is not the first good game of his of the season for him. So uh, I think Jennings is right on that cusp. Anyways, Jordan Mason, the rushing line is ridiculous. It's 84 and a half. It's the second week in a row that he has the highest rushing line of any running. Yeah, back. but he didn't get there last week. No, he did not. He get only got 77. He didn't get to 90. Right, yeah, no, he d he didn't hit his line. That that was a surprising game where they lost to the Rams in L.A. Um, is there any chance that they lose here to the Patriots? Nah, man, I would I would say no, but I would have Drake said May, no to maybe the Drake Rams. May comes in and no, he's fine. What go, was that no. sound? It was it was like a fire. That was whip. A, that was it was a fire. Whip. Yeah, it was a whip oh. made of fire. Drake May coming into a game on the road in San Francisco is your. No, that's fire not, whip. That's, that's not a not fire where whip. I want him to come in. Uh, Brock Purdy, second most passing yards in the league, and we're hoping Brandon Ayuk gets going this week because yes, if he goodness. doesn't, the panic will get going. Purdy was full awesome last week. He looked amazing. The way he navigated the pocket is so elite. Um, I, I really, really liked what you saw, and he threw the three touchdowns to Jennings. I think he's a, a decent start. Is he your starting quarterback this week in league of record? He is not. I am playing Geno Smith ahead of him. Would you play – Okay, so Gina's ahead. Would you go Brock Purdy against the Patriots or Jared Goff against Seattle? Goff. I like that You're Seattle. You're playing Gino against Detroit? Yeah. Okay. Cleveland's you would, you would, wanted – You would play Brock? My, uh -huh. my worry here with Brock, and obviously it's it. Brock has been great at his touchdown percentage, but my worry is simply if this game that has a 10.5 point over-under gets out of control and they run the ball a lot, 
Second most passing yards in football. Yeah. Cleveland's one and two, Las Vegas one and two, and they get to play each other in a game of football this week in Las Vegas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Raiders minus one and a half. The over-under is... Uh, oh, blarf. Oh, blarf. Sorry, sorry. It's a blarf. 37. Because we've got... We've got we got problems here in the in in this game, on both sides. You have right now, statistically speaking, Deshaun Watson's one of the worst quarterbacks in football, combined with the most sacks given up in football by this offensive line. That is now going to be without Jack Conklin. They have injuries throughout this uh, roster. On the other side. You still have a banged-up Max Crosby. You had one of the worst defensive performances I've ever seen last week by Las Vegas. They did nothing. And so the expectation here from the uh, the Raiders' hometown is that this is a very low-scoring game. You've got Jerome Ford that has been dealing with a knee injury that's expected to play. And then... You know, on the other side, you've had no running backs that you can trust. Like, talk to me about what you're – where where are the starts in this game? Is it Amari Cooper? I, I, yeah. I, it, Mar- Is it Amari, Brock easy. Bowers? Amari Cooper, Brock Bowers, Devontae Adams. Who's dealing and, with a hamstring. Um, If Max Crosby is playing the Las Vegas Raiders defense. Dude, I mean, you, you mentioned it. Deshaun Watson's leading the league in sacks taken, but it's 19th. He's taken we're, we're, there's only been three games. He's taken ni- like over a six a game. That's insane. So yeah, I mean I, I don't trust him. I don't. You don't trust the Raiders. I don't Raiders? trust the Raiders defense. Oh, I, I get that. I mean, I but but the the sacks that Deshaun because Watson Cros- takes. Because Crosby is hurt, man. No, I get I mean, if Crosby's not active, certainly Even not. if he's active, I don't think he's healthy. I don't think the Browns offense is healthy. Like nothing above happened. The shoulders. I mean, Max Crosby played last week. They gave up 36 points. They didn't get to the quarterback. That's I, I'm I'm just saying my perspective sure. on it. I, I don't trust it right now. Maybe it's because I played them everywhere. Well, yeah. they weren't expecting and there's so Andy many to be other, so good. There's just so many other defenses I trust this week. Both sides of the Rams-Bears uh, game I would trust far more. But I feel the like low over under, I mean, look, you're, you're right. In that respect, right maybe now, the upside's protected. But. Right now, if it was like the Carolina Panthers at home, Against the Browns, I feel like I would play that defense. Just a, a home crowd against De- what Deshaun Watson's putting on film. There, there should be some picks, and there definitely will be some sacks. And I just don't expect the Browns to score a lot against anybody. Amari Cooper's line is sitting at fifty-one and a half receiving yards. He bounced back in a big way. He also playing fun. his former team, and he is a lock in your lineup. But Zamir White and Alexander Madison, bleh. I mean, it's just nasty. What are you talking about? Alexander Madison is a touchdown machine. He touchdown is. in three straight weeks. If Adams missed, who do you take the shot with? Is it Trey Tucker after the 7 for 96 and a touchdown? Is it Jacoby Myers? I think it's Brock Bowers. Well, he's I mean, in I your would, lineup. But who would you take uh, a shot at with wide receiver? Between those two, I would go Jacoby. Trey Tucker's just he's a he's a watch right now. Yeah. All right. The Kansas City Chiefs at 3-0 and take on the Los Angeles Chargers 2-1. and Chiefs are seven point road favorites. That's shocking to me. It considering is, how the Chargers have played. It the, is not to me. Really? No, it is not. I like this is not even in contention for an almost upset. The Chargers are undermanned right now. They have a quarterback that may or may not play, and if he plays, he's hurt. Mm-hmm. They lost Derwin James to a suspension on the defensive yeah. side of the football, which is catastrophic. They have an implied point total of 16 and a half. I mean, Alt they can't, is hurt, right? They, yeah, Joe Alt is is banged up. Like to me and and Rashawn Slater. Like neither of them practice. To me this is this is going to be a pretty easy game for the Chiefs to control. This should be the for sure get right game for Travis Kelsey. Kelsey always destroys the Chargers. No Derwin James is monstrous for the one week suspension where it, I feel like if Kelsey can't can't get it going this week you start to you know really hit the the red alarm, but I I think he has a a big get right game. I love the part of the tight end landscape right now where if a guy doesn't get it going, the real answer is you have no options, just keep playing him. Right. Yeah. But I mean that that's the truth. I mean you just oh, traded it for Mark Andrews this week, who scored zero points. Yes, I did. Um. Yeah. So hopefully he gets it going. If he doesn't, he's still your tight end probably. And 
But I hope – I mean, I think it will happen. I think he needs to get into shape. Do we you – know, like injuries aside, do, you, do we get to find out anything about the Chargers here? Because they have played the Raiders – and Gardner Minshew, they've played Carolina and yep. Bryce Young. They've yep. played Pittsburgh, which they they lost to Pittsburgh and Justin Fields. I mean, the these are those are not uh, three offenses that I would put in the high flying category. Somebody asked me on Twitter the other day, why, I don't know that the Chiefs are there. Right why now we either. ever talk about last year's defensive numbers two or three weeks into the season? That is why is because two or three games does not define your entire defensive yeah. performance on the year. Chargers are fifth against quarterbacks, eighth against running backs, seventh against wide receivers. Like As of right now, this is a shutdown defense. And to be fair, I think those numbers would stay perfect if they played Gardner Minshew, Br <laughs> Bryce Young, and Justin Fields every week. I just don't think they can put up the points in this game to possibly control it, which means, you know, obviously Mahomes – Rashi Rice, who's one of the best wide receivers in football right now, who's got a receiving line of 75 and a half yards. Yeah, that makes sense. Those guys are in. Worthy is not trustworthy right now. No. Mm -mm. And the running back room is frightening. Super frightening. I mean, Carson uh, Steele. We did watch um, their offensive coordinator talking about the running back rotation, and he came out and said that they were very pleased with the workload that Carson had and his performance and that they don't know yet what they have in Kareem Hunt. They've got to see him at practice. That leads me to believe that this week, Carson Steele is the player I would play. Uh, I think he'll get 15 rushing opportunities in a game where you're favored by a touchdown. I think he's okay to play. Yeah, last week he finished as the running back, 33, 17 carries, 72 yards, 4.2 a carry. Had opportunities at the at the goal line. I honestly think you'll be happy if he gets in this week, and you might be a little bit disappointed if he doesn't. But he should have a chance. J.K. Dobbins, no offensive lineman, maybe no quarterback, maybe too much for him to handle in this week against a, a defense that we know so far this year has been shutting down the run. Yeah. And I, what do you do if you're the – if you're um, what's their defensive coordinator's name, for goodness sakes, for the Chiefs? Spags. Spags? Spags. If you're Spags, what's the game plan right here? The uh, game plan stop is – Stop J.K. Dobbins? It's Dobbins, right? And, yeah. and the game plan for the Chargers is ball control and running. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for them to run, but they've, you know, they've succeeded um, a handful of times. Dobbins has looked good on the season. I think it'll be difficult to straight bench him, depending on what your other options are. But you don't expect a big game here. I think I'm a, a char bench a, bench the Chargers. I was gonna, I th I'm I'm playing J.K. Like for most teams, I think if you have Dobbins, you're in a situation where you're probably forced to play him. Uh, the only other question I was going to ask. Yeah, you're probably is, right. Not bench the whole team. Is, Dobbins is probably in. Is there a league format? I'll guess I'll go to Jason on this one. Can Lad McConkey be sneaky at all, just for a floor of Quentin Johnson's probably going to get the treatment that the the number one wide receivers have been getting so far from the Chiefs, and Lad will be operating in the middle of the field. Yeah, I mean he's better to me than Pop Douglas. Um, okay. So if you want to go that low and you're saying, oh, you got to play more than 36 wide receivers yeah. in a league, then okay, he, he he is a quality player who I I still think Herbert plays this week. They're going to be down. They're going to be needing to throw the ball. If you don't get a touchdown, you're not going to have a great game from him, and you don't expect a touchdown in this matchup. So he's he's just a full PPR uh, middling startable player, but he's talented and. The the reason forty four yards is his peak so far the, through three weeks. The reason I'm not, um, well, yeah, but they've been they've been in tight, slow running games. If if they really are down, if you think you know you you wouldn't even take the almost upset here, they're going to probably have to throw the ball a little bit more in this game. I just I I believe in the coaching staff. Harbaugh I think says Her never Herbert. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, Herbert is you know a good quarterback banged up. I, I, at home, man, in a divisional game, I just don't see the Chiefs getting completely, like, trouncing them in this one. But so, different perspectives. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with some more games. Sunday night football, Buffalo, Baltimore. This is fun, or so we're promised and hoped for. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus two and a half at home. That's not surprising to me. They're, um, you know, got to defend the home turf. Over under is 46 and a half. So this is only the fourth time, believe it or not, that we've ever seen Allen versus Lamar in their entire career. Hmm. Um, Lamar has not thrown for a lot of passing yards in the previous matchups, and this game 
you know, Buffalo's defense has been one of the more interesting and surprising storylines to begin the year. They've been really, really good, uh, especially stopping quarterbacks from producing. The quarterbacks and wide receivers so far this year, 11 fantasy points per game given up, or actually 12 to quarterbacks and only 18 to wide receiver rooms, which makes, you know, a middling wide receiver room like the Ravens almost well, just hyper scary. Yeah, I mean, I, I you're probably going to still throw Zay Flowers in there. Uh, you know, if we're talking about guys like Lad McConkey, he's certainly well above that just in a target pecking order in a game that could actually score points. Um, you've got Mark Andrews as the other receiving option, which the, you know, Oh no! You've got the Bills, who both is he? this season is he a receiving option? his line is twenty nine <laughs> and a half yards. They're expect they're like, hey, thirty yards. You think he can do it? You want to you want to bet that? <laughs> <laughs> you just all he needs is thirty. This is John Harbaugh. What have you done? I you, you know snake. Throw the ball to Mark. Last year the Bills were a defense that you targeted against tight end. This year they are the same. I mean, I'm I I traded for him. I'm playing him. If you have him, you're playing him. A top ten. I don't know if search. you are. A you top don't ten know that. Search. I don't know if you have him. You're playing him. I mean, there's been guys picked up. Jake Ferguson, Cole Komet. Those were guys that That's that are just, on those rosters. Just gonna say a top ten search on our start sit tool right now is Mark Andrews or Cole Komet. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, that that would be for me, Mark Andrews. Like that. I'm I'm not gonna pivot away yet, but. To each own. I don't think you have Ferguson. to feel the pain indefinitely. I think if you have him, you can bench him. You can let him recover and not go through it. If you if you don't want to go through it again, this is a, a game where you make that choice. 29 receiving yards will not get it done. No. So I, I hope he recovers. Two will get I, I'm it with, done. I'm rooting for Jason to be right. Oh. I've also come out and said I think he's the same player. But the offense is not the same. Yeah, when when I when we watch the film of Kelsey and Andrews, I I I feel like Kelsey looks a little bit slower. One guy's putting in maximum effort, right? The other guy's kind of Mark Andrews sometimes balled out last week, like he for NFL for his team. Yes. Not helpful for fantasy whatsoever, but he was awesome. Do you think he Isaiah Likely is a good player? Do you yeah. think he's an athletic, good tight end? Yes. Yeah. Well, we saw that right in week one, twelve targets, nine for hundred and whatever yards. And a touchdown. The last two weeks, Isaiah Likely. Nobody's saying Isaiah Likely's career's over. That Isaiah Likely has no talent. He isn't athletic, and he's lost a step. Three total catches for thirty yards in two weeks. It's the fact that the offense can flip a switch and decide to run the football with Derrick Henry to dump it down to Justice Hill to find Rashad Bateman, who was running in the slot last week for the first time that we've seen in uh, ever. So they, they are turning different dials, and I just don't like that you can turn the tight end dial off yeah. in Baltimore. It makes me sad. It, it does because they've always been a tight end first system where the, the one dial that they never turn off was yep. tight end receptions. Yep. And it looked that way even week one, even though it didn't it wasn't Andrews. It was like they're they're still this team. And they could be in this game. We're saying I, that they could be. I I believe they will be. In this game against this specific matchup where the, the wide receivers have been locked down, I believe that this will be a tight end game. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, they're your locks. Yep. James Cook, Derrick Henry, they're, they're locked. Yep. Oh. And at oh. wide receiver. Oh. Uh, update. Oh. Update, guys. Because I just went to, I don't know, maybe do some. Uh, Mark Andrews' line has moved to 30 and a half. Oh, baby. oh <laughs> yeah. yes. 30's not getting it done anymore. No, no. You need more. More uh, mid, more mid trade, like mid show trades that you're doing over there. Oh no! I just uh, I like I like that line. So okay, I I I believe that this is a get right game for Kelsey now, you're and not, Andrews. That's good because if you had already placed that, then you you'd be putting your mouth where your money is. You know what I mean? Right. And you're not doing no. It. Now you're trying. You might go put your money where your <laughs> where your mouth is. Right. Because that's you need more than no fantasy points. <laughs> you need to lose. I, w I want to make sure that when Andrews goes out and lays a turd, that I'm. Double on Yeah, I feel that pain. I want to. I want to really. Feel <laughs> what if he had been? Deep. What if he had been going to bet the under? That would have been the real trick. Oh, that, I mean, the happiness. Hedge. That's the happy hedge. Yeah. Uh, all right, Khalil Shakir. I think he is a every week flex right now. I'm. In. He's reliable. I'm in on Shakir. He's also. He's, he's caught said, every target. I've said this before. Impressive. Since before the year, like he is so evidently, so clearly the best 
most trustworthy receiver. Um, he's playing good football. He, he's got three weeks where, you know, you're not 11.7 points, 8.1, 16.2. That's flex worthy. Yeah. Would you play him or Jawan Jennings? Um, uh, the, the, With Debo back. With Debo back, I'd go to Shakir. Dalton Kincaid, Jason, your start of the week. Yep, uh, he's we we outlined outlaid why on yesterday's episode, but uh, you know this this appears like a week where tight ends could just kind of come back to life. Oh, don't say that. Well, Ferg, Ferg Daddy, he he was just fine last You're saying night. He, he started, started? Off, he started the trend. This is going to be a good tight end week. All right, Jason. You Moore. heard it. You heard it here. Jason first. Randall Moore. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I want the credit. You want the credit. Okay. And you're definitely not. I'm definitely not, not going to be wrong. We got double Monday night football games again. We do. Oh baby, I didn't mind. I'm it going last week. back to the outback. <laughs> <laughs> Tradition. <laughs> want to go have a steak, <laughs> or so that's described. Tennessee. 0 oh, and three, Miami one and two. Okay, well maybe we only have one game. The oh, DraftKings yeah. Sportsbook line here: Miami minus one over under is thirty six and a half. That's a blurf. Come on, man! I feel like I have something important to say about Miami, which is that I am, I'm of the belief that Tyree Kill is going to be okay. Okay, big, that's great. Big, uh, so for me, Tyler Huntley for me, I'm not shipping. Tyree kill away on purpose like I'm not going out and shopping him and sending him away like hey, Malik neighbors sure if you can get Malik neighbors but I I actually think he's going to be okay and I think we're living we have a we have a season right now where we're seeing evidence the evidence of if you're a good wide receiver it works out for you if you're a really good wide receiver it's worked out for you in, in terms of the quarterback play you know Malik neighbors a lot of people thought he was dealt the worst hand in football. I, I will he's say a, he's number one. I will say that the Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, though that level of quarterback versus like a Skyler or a true like backup that doesn't belong on the field, I, I think that's harder to overcome. Like if Skyler was the quarterback, um, which I'm really happy it looks like it's gonna be Pro Bowl. <clears throat> yes, Pro, Pro Bowl. Bowler, uh Tyler Huntley. Um but like if Skyler was there, I don't know that Justin Jefferson would have a good game. I'm talking about big picture. I'm talking about sure. beyond a week that Miami and Mike McDaniel, they figure it out. You've I will, got a long season. You have the best wide receiver or one of the top five in the game. You figure out how to get that ball into his hands enough to where I would be trying. If I could get him cheap, I would do it. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Okay, so the, the, the Dolphins are at home. They're favored by a point, so it's pretty much a pickup game. Just out of curiosity, who do you think wins the this game? I mean, I haven't thought much about that. I think uh, I think Miami probably wins the game. So this week for Tyree Kill, the line is all the way down to fifty two and a half. That makes sense. Uh, but just a reminder, he will be most likely facing a lot of Legarius Sneed. Last year, Tyreek was the wide receiver 29. So trade for him after this yeah, week. Yeah, it might be after this week. If I got him, I'm playing him because he's Tyreek Kill and it just takes the one play. He's got, but, he's got a line uh, 14 yards better than Calvin Ridley on the other side. Yeah, just – Where just, are you guys with Calvin Ridley? After seeing three games of football, week one, not great. Week two, very good. Yeah, Week I, three, who, where is he? Where's I, Calvin? I think Calvin Ridley is one of those guys where you 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 got to look at the matchup. I I'm still starting Calvin Ridley most weeks. This one, I don't think Jalen Ramsey has really been shadowing. Um, I don't think so. You know, Legarius Sneed helped shut him down last week, where they went more towards Hopkins. I I'm I'm fine starting Calvin Ridley. I still think he's going to be the number one target. Um, but just like last season, like he is not a consistent wide receiver he's a big play big game wide receiver tony pollard devon h and the running backs in this game it's a low over under they're they're H-Han both was uh, was kind of disappointing last week so with was the, tony yeah tony, tony was very disappointing they're both still placed to me though yeah i i love seeing the dk rushing line at 60 and a half for devon h and this week i would have anticipated that being lower 
if that's his rushing line, because I think his fantasy points come through the passing game. So if he's got a six point baseline there, if 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 that number is about right, um, where he should have a he should have a very good game. Jason's talked a lot about Will Levis in the pocket, but he's been pressured on the most dropbacks of any quarterback in football. Not I, if you ask him. I am more. <laughs> Oh, that's good, I, Mike. I am much more of an. <laughs> he has <evolved>. no clue. <laughs> like there, there were plays last week. Jason was yelling at Will Levis, and it was like on the snap, his center was blown by, and the guy's in his face instantaneously. And there's nothing you can do. No, there's I nothing mean, you can do to avoid a sack. But he doesn't see it. He doesn't start I, to yeah. try. He just I gets don't agree. Plowed. <laughs> Jalen Waddle or Calvin Ridley, if you had to make that choice. <laughs> um, Calvin. Yeah, that's where I'd be too. It's Calvin, but not by much. Seattle's 3-0, and the other Monday night football game taken on the 2-1 and Detroit Lions, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus 3.5 at home. The over-under is 46. Uh, Detroit games have hit the under three consecutive times. All the Detroit games have been over 50. This one's at 46. So, um, you know, the, the game last week with Arizona, it pretty much hinged on a two-minute warning play that mm, yeah. was a 14 point swing in Detroit's favor. Yeah, it, it was only a 20 to 13 game. I just want to check with you guys. Uh it's hard to keep up to date with all the rule changes that the NFL puts in, you know, the kickoffs, emphasis on these things. It's still the 2 minute warning. It's not the 201 remaining yeah, warning. They, they I'm just did, checking. Yeah, did I miss an update? Mm, yeah, didn't. you missed an update for one game last week. Okay. So what 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 are you mm. thinking about the three and zero Seahawks two and one Lions? Who do you like to win this ball game, and uh, what are your start sit decisions that you're struggling with? Because I think, you know, for me, Jamison Williams and JSN, those two guys are going to be at the forefront for a lot of start sit questions for our listeners. I, Jamison Williams, I have more confidence in than than JSN. Yeah, if, I, if we're comparing, if, the two. if we're just comparing the two, I I think both are are decent starts this week. We've talked about the slot points given up. Um, from the Detroit Lions. I actually think it might be a, a weird blessing in disguise that Kenneth Walker, you know, is not going to play this week in the sense that you you really can't run on the Detroit Lions. You're going to need to focus on the passing game. That's more Zach Charbonnet's skill set. So does that make him is, – is that make him an okay start because you – Oh, if Walker's out, yeah, I'd play him. Because Charbonnet, this is number one defense against running backs. They only give up eight points total per game this year. Averaging you saw about, James Conner be useless. He's averaging 20 opportunities – yeah, I, I I think he is a lower end start. They they're they're good at guarding the running back position, not just in um you know a, a line of scrimmage, but also in the passing game. They don't give up a lot of passing work there either. I think it's the slot wide receivers, the outside wide receivers. Um, this is why I think Geno's going to throw the ball a lot. Uh, his, you know his line is at two hundred and forty two and a half passing yards. And he's balling out so far. Uh, third most passing yards in the league, seventy-five percent completion rate. This is what made me sk This is what made me love Kyler Murray's passing yards numbers last week, and they were bad against Detroit. That that was the disappointment was the pass rush, and Kyler was at two oh seven. So it has me a little bit skittish because this, you know, the over under is not where we expected this game to be. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's been a little bit of an adjustment there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it could be an overreaction from the first three games hitting the under for Detroit. Um, maybe the, the not the, the past two Seattle Lions the, games, though. If you remember those games, they were mm, juicy. very, very good. Yeah, were I, they? Oh yeah, you don't remember those ones? Oh man, let me. Yeah, pull those up. I'll try to pull those. So, so last, you like Geno last year in twenty? What about golf? So twenty twenty three was thirty one to thirty seven. Whew. Yes. And then in uh, 2022, it was 45 to 48. I want that game. Yeah, let's, I've wanted it for three weeks with Detroit. So I'm trying to learn do that. I'm trying to temper based on this year's Detroit Lions being a little bit. Maybe those games are a little bit different than we've been expecting. Yeah. So uh, and Ken, and no Ken Walker does not help that offense. He has not been ruled out yet, for what it's worth. They oh. normally, I mean, they they could have ruled him out uh, today, and they have not. Yeah. I mean, it's, that is the it's the last game of the week, so if you're waiting on Ken Bone Walker, you better have Better have Charbonnet. We we <laughs> <laughs> Or I mean like like you I guess maybe you have Jamison Williams, maybe you have JSN. Would you uh, never mind, I'm not even, that's I'm not we, waiting on Lockett. We don't usually pull out the schedule adjusted 
2024 or or this season defensive rankings until next week after we've got a month of data. Um, but we we still have it behind the scenes. I was just curious how the Lions are doing their defense. You know, they've, they've had lower sco- scores than what we've hoped for this season. And right now, schedule adjusted, they are, unsurprisingly, number one against running backs. They're still number 27, giving up 34.5 schedule adjust fantasy points per game to wide receivers. So I, I think this could, uh, you know, I, I like the options there. I love DK Metcalf. I'm fine with JSN. Um, I think even Lockett could be a good flex. Right now, Laporta didn't practice Thursday, came back to practice on Friday. So I think with the low ankle sprain, which is what it was, he will be back out there. And if he's on your uh, if he's on your team, you're playing Sam Laporta. Yeah. Now, you do need to probably, like, just put – maybe put Noah Fant or something. Oh, yeah. he didn't practice either. Oh, with a toe injury. I'm trying to injury. just think about your emergency case. I don't want you stuck. Like, a tight end start doesn't end up in your flex where you can have another player. So uh, pay attention to today's practice, and the team's probably going to put him out there. But I, I so don't know. May- CMC from week one is freaking me out. Yeah, so are you saying maybe you have another option that you could go on? Like who's someone you could have picked up? Let's say you picked up Cole Komet. I and- would not start anybody. I would tr- go into the game, get Chiga Conquo right in dirty. Tennessee. No, go, go, go in Monday Night Football, Chiga Conquo. Just know that Laporte is going to be active. Go get Johnny okay. Smith in okay. Miami. Yeah. Just have an emergency plan unless you hear definitively today that he's going to be fine. I like that. Uh, Jared Goff, though, we, I didn't hear the discussion on where you're at with him because it's 11 points, 8 points, 14 points, three games. I, I think their running game might be too darn good. Um, obviously, uh, you know, he's he's been historically great. Um, the, the Seahawks – Defense is really weird to figure out right now based on who they've played. Last year, they were not good against the run. And so, I, you know, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I would rather play Geno in this game than Goff, despite the fact that Goff is at home and favored. Uh, I mean, I, I know I would play that way. All right. Um, let's go ahead and move on to what's quickly becoming my favorite segment. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Hooray. It's me, everyone. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I must pay for my crimes. Yeah. That which, the lineup last week, that was a crime against all of humanity. What you happened did not, there? You did not win. Oh, no. Yeah, you, did, you, did, you, do, you do deserve this. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, this is just... So last week, well, uh, they deserve it I for snuck, being. The I snuck ones. by Jason. Uh, thank you, Juwan Jennings, and Jason comfortably second place. Mike, it's time. Wheel of shame. All right, spin the dumb wheel. Let's see what have we got here. We got Viking. Oh, Bananarama, Geezer. What is it? Snot my best day? Is that what it says? Snot my best day. Oh, snot my best day. Okay, so what is this? This is uh, looks like a hat with a mask. Oh, it's a combo. Uh, like it's built in, kind of like the. Oh, oh yeah, it does. Is, I was, it is this does. a witch with a ball cap? No, it's on? it's pretty it's pretty snotty. It is very snotty, but I believe what you are looking at here is a. Man, it was snot your best day last week. I gotta no. unvelcro this hat, guys. We got. I don't know if it's gonna fit. <laughs> yeah, we we're, we made a bet. Yeah. Okay. Oh All right. yeah. Oh, that Pull is, those eyes down, Mike. That need... is disgusting. What? Oh, there you go. Gross. Looking what? good. Okay. Gross. All right. Okay, we're good. That we're is good. very snotty. I got yeah, it. Yeah, you have a oh, really that's right in the eyeball. Yeah, that was. You look just like your lineup last week. Actually... This is better than my lineup last week, guys. It actually oh, fits man. you pretty well. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yeah. You sound I love great. that. When ah! <laughs> the, the beard coming out of the <laughs> mouth is terrifying. <laughs> That is legit. Like, that was a horror. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, do, do not go to YouTube to watch this. Not if you have children. Oh, how comfortable around. is it? Because it looks super comfortable. We're at a zero out of ten at the moment. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into our lineups this week. And uh, I'm going Kyler Murray at home against Washington. Yeah, me too. Yeah, 6, yeah me 800. too. I figured you guys would do that because, you know, it's worked so well for me two weeks in a row. Yeah. Uh, my running back starts this week. Brees Hall, 7,800. Ah. At home against Denver. That sounds like a man who doesn't have Brees Hall. I tried to work him in. 
Nah, that's a great pick. And then uh, my second selection here, Brian Robinson Jr. against Arizona, uh, 6,100. I have Brian Robinson at 6,100 as well. My start of the week, I did not get to get Brees in there. I went much cheaper. Please don't play Joe Mixon. I've got Cam Akers oh! in there at 5,300. Oh, wow. Risky business. Mike, who's your, court, uh, your running backs? Hey, we're live, boys. I got... Saquon Barkley, eight thousand, right? Eight K against about it. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then Chuba Hubbard at fifty seven hundred in that matchup against. So Barry. we've nice. got uh, me and Jason share Brian Robinson, but that uh, was we're, uh, we're pretty live here on the on live. the running backs. Vita Vea does look like he's going to play this week. All right, my wide receivers. Yeah, but you know who's not going to play? Anyone else for the Eagles? <laughs> That's true. Let me ask you this: Do you guys both have Marvin Harrison Jr.? Yes. yes. Okay, so do I. <laughs> Uh, 7,500, so Kyler and Marvin, those guys are washed out. But my other wide receivers this week, I'm going 5,700. George Pickens against Indianapolis. And at 5,600, Deontay Johnson at home against Cincinnati. Uh, Mike, you go next because I believe I pulled up uh, a different lineup. I'm going to pull up oh, the right what lineup. Are, you're changing your lineup no, right not, now. I'm not changing it. You're changing your lineup right no, now. No, because I made a different lineup earlier uh -huh, in the yeah. week for a different Hold on, contest. I got to check my so other wait, lineup. Were right. you wrong about the names? That no, you no, no. Read? All those were the same. But the reason I knew is because I had George Pickens. I saw the 5,700. And then, but I was like, oh, I pivoted out of George Pickens. Okay. Uh, so I, ah, I've got it pulled up now. <laughs> Um, I've got Deontay Johnson at 5,600. It's not your best day, Mike. No. Uh, Deontay Johnson at 5,600 in full PPR feels like a gimme so long as he is Is that healthy. who you have? That is who I have. All right. And at 6,000, this one is a little spicy. I'm I'm playing the injury risk this week with some of my players. I'm going Jaden Reed at 6,000. I think he's too oh. talented to be at 6,000, and if Jordan Love is back, I am very excited about that. All right, Mike. Who's uh, your other uh, two Deontay Johnson's a triple wash, everybody. All right. Uh, but then I got Mr. Nico Collins at 7,200, uh, hoping that he plays. All right. And my final three positional uh, or my final three starts at tight end, I had to save a few bucks. 3,600. Tyler Conklin at home against Denver after the big week last week and with Garrett Wilson covered up by Patrick Sertan. You look so bad. Where Mike. did my mo terrible. money go? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I wanted to work Nico and I couldn't. I wanted to work Brees and I couldn't. Both of you guys figured out how and I'm, I feel like you haven't pointed well, enough. Uh, I love my flex. I don't know if you guys have the same guy, but at 4,400, which I found ridiculously cheap, you're Mooney? shaking your head, is Darnell Mooney. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's and then my defense, I had to save there too. It's the riskiest of my plays. It is the Denver Broncos against the Jets. Oh. Um, I have... 2,500. I, I mean, I punted tight end. I punted tight end. I have Elijah Higgins. Yeah, yeah. Tight end for the Arizona Cardinals with Trey McBride. What did he out? cost? Though? Only 3,100. 30, 3,100. I thought, I thought about it. Um, my defense is the Texans. That's a little bit higher at 3,000 than I usually go, but at home against Jacksonville, I think they'll get some points scored. And my flex, I guess this is where I paid up. It just doesn't feel as good as your guys' is paying up. Uh, I think Brandon Ayuk is a great player. I like it. I'm going to not just take last week's 10 targets for nothing. That's where your money went, by the way. Yeah. I and mean, that was far more money than Mooney. Mike, your last three? Conk, conk, baby. You got Conklin? I do at 3,600. Uh, my defense, I'm playing the Atlanta Falcons against stupid, stupid Derek Carr at home. And my flex is Paris Campbell. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Paris, you went deep. Wow. What is he, 3,000? 3, is he rock, rock bottom basement? Yeah, stone cold man, Wow. Baby. By the way, Jason, uh, the decision for me on the Houston defense and Elijah Higgins, those are the two that I flipped Conklin and Broncos. Because if I go Elijah Higgins, which I thought about, then you can go Houston D. So it's interesting we'll have those against each other. All right, Mike, you still comfortable? Uh, I can do this all day. All right, that was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets. Instantly download the Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Don't forget to join Mike Wright. On Sunday Live, keep that tongue in your mouth, Mike. That's disgusting. Don't tell me how to live. That's a lot of snot hanging off your face. <sighs> Studs and duds, Monday, Punday coming on Monday. Goodbye, everybody.
problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.